Today, I'm gonna be trying the Asta diet, and that means a lot of potatoes. Not all, not all, this is a lot of, this is way too many potato. Now, Asta from Black Clover is known for two things, eating potatoes and screaming. So today, I'm gonna to be eating as many potatoes as possible. We have quite a few varieties of potatoes. I have some beautiful Idaho potatoes here, which are very cheap. I have some beautiful sweet potatoes here, which we're gonna use in a very fun way. And then, my favorite, eeny meeny little fingerling potatoes. These are amazing. The problem is, I don't know exactly how many potatoes I need to eat. Now, according to my calculations and things that I've seen on the internet, Asta is between five foot one and five foot three, so we'll give him a little bit more on that and give him five foot three. He's also listed around 165 pounds and at that height, Asta is jacked. If we put those stats into our macro calculator, we get 172 grams of protein, 375 grams of carbohydrate, 80 grams of fat, bringing this to a total of around 2,800 calories. So now that we know what we have to do, we just have to do it. Now that I know exactly how much I have to eat, I have to figure out how many potatoes I have to make. So I'm just gonna make a bunch of potatoes and then weigh them out as I need them. Yes, because I do have a menu for today. But Asta doesn't just eat potatoes. We also do see Asta eating meat on quite a few occasions. And so in my case, I'm gonna be using chicken breast and chicken thigh to keep it super simple. Now the other thing I really wanna do for you guys is show you how to meal prep a lot of this. I had asked you guys on the community page if you guys wanted full meal preps of all of the character diets, which I will be doing now because you guys seem to really want that. So what I'm gonna show you is a few different ways to meal prep something for Asta. Now the first thing for breakfast is actually called smash browns. You're gonna need quite a few fingerling potatoes and there's a reason for that. Now I just made up this name, smash browns, literally as I wrote this. But the thought process is to use a potato that has quite a bit of skin to flesh ratio. So I'm gonna be boiling these until they're nice and soft and then we're gonna be smashing these. Also, uh, I'm gonna wash these, I'll be, I'll be over here. After washing these, we're gonna fill this entire thing with water. And guess what we're doing? Boil, we're just boiling them. Yep, potatoes. Now this has to go over to the stove. And the biggest reason why I'm cooking all of my potatoes ahead of time before measuring anything out for the diet plan is because I like to make sure I measure my food out as I'm going to eat it. I'm not eating raw potatoes, I'm only eating cooked potatoes, so I wanna make sure I measure everything after it's cooked. Now these are gonna be done the same exact way. So I'm gonna boil them. With the sweet potatoes going on the stove, we have all our fur potatoes working finally, but we're still gonna need some more later. I have a feeling one of those is gonna fall over and it's probably gonna be the wok. Now I don't necessarily need these until later, but I'm just gonna wash them and get them prepped now. These two guys are gonna be used for potato pancakes for dinner, so I need them raw. Now for the protein, I have three pounds worth of chicken thigh. I don't necessarily need to eat three pounds today. I probably need closer to 1.9 pounds worth of chicken at some point. I don't know why I'm doing this with my hands. But I'm gonna go ahead and cook all of this off because yes, I will be using this for the rest of the week. But what I'm doing with these chicken thighs is honestly nothing. It sounds really weird and a little bit far-fetched when you're on a cooking channel, but I like to use these in a very simple way. So this way, if I want to change it up, I can add stuff to it later. So in this case, we're just doing salt and black pepper. And I should have done this before because I hope. Ah, oh, it's in the chicken. See again, Elf? That's why we don't have nice things. Bunch of black pepper, a lot of black pepper there. And then I'm doing just maybe like a, a tablespoon or two of olive oil. You don't need too much for chicken thigh because it does have quite a bit of fat. This is more to make sure that the seasoning gets all over the chicken versus like flavoring the chicken with oil. I learned this technique from my friend Andong over at My Name Is Andong. Give this a good mix and this is pretty much ready to go. Onto a sheet tray, a little bit of aluminum foil just to help protect it and help with cleanup later. Then take your chicken thighs, throw them onto the sheet tray with aluminum foil. This this entire tray goes into a preheated oven that is set to 450 degrees Fahrenheit. Literally the hottest mine will go for about 12 minutes and our chicken thighs are done. And this oven is not preheated, so I guess I'll make some chicken breast. This is also three pounds worth of chicken breast. This is technically the same amount of calories that Goku would have eaten. How is Asta eating the same? Whatever. Now admittedly, I will do the chicken breast slightly different because chicken breast is not as good as chicken thigh. It really doesn't hold up to the same cooking methods that well because there's not as much fat. Instead, I'm gonna take each piece of chicken breast, then we're going to fillet it so we get thinner pieces of chicken breast, just like that. Since chicken breast isn't that great, we're just gonna marinate it and we're gonna cook it to order. Chicken breast, sliced. It didn't take very long. I'm just doing the salt and black pepper on this. It's gonna get a little more oil because it needs the help. Once this is done, I'm just gonna 
put it not where Gandalf is, but my oven is now preheated, so all of my chicken thighs will go into the oven for about 12 minutes. Now for the chicken breast, same method, but we're gonna cook it for less time. And just like that, all of the proteins are started. So now we kind of just wait, because we need the potatoes to do literally anything else. I just pulled the chicken breast out of the oven. This was only in there for about nine minutes. You can see how fast the meal prep goes. It is not the most pretty chicken breast, but I bet you it's delicious. And if you want full recipes, check out my cookbook on chefpk.com. Pre-orders are still available. The books are being printed as I film this. So get them now. And then here's the chicken thigh. The chicken thigh went for maybe 14 minutes total. These have to cool down before we cut into them for our meal prep. So I'm just gonna let these hang out while the potatoes finish because those need another probably 30, 40 minutes. Now I have all of my meal prep ready. I have chicken thighs here, I have chicken breasts here, and I have this giant tray of potatoes. But the way I designed this entire day to go is that these have to actually cool down before I can use them for different recipes. So now this all gets put away until tomorrow when we start training. Let's do it. And as you can tell by my hair, it is the next morning. We're about to have some breakfast. What is beeping at me? Oh, this thing which I do need to heat up because we're gonna be needing an air fryer to make breakfast. Now I have some fingerling potatoes. This is 12 ounces worth of fingerling potatoes. You can see how much you get. It's quite a bit, plus two giant sweet potatoes. This is 24 ounces of sweet potato, but the sweet potato is actually gonna be for dinner, but I need to make it right now because it's gonna be dessert. First thing is I need to turn on my air fryer because this does have to warm up. You don't necessarily need an air fryer for this recipe, but I find it to be so much easier and you can definitely just do this in a pan on the stove. Now while the air fryer is heating up so we can make breakfast, I'm gonna start making dessert. This is going to be the pudding that they reference quite a few times, but instead of making an actual pudding, I'm gonna make a pseudo sweet potato cheesecake. Into my blender, I'm adding in four ounces of yogurt, that's non-fat Greek yogurt with four ounces worth of cream cheese followed by our two giant sweet potatoes. Again, I'm winging this. I have not made this before, but I'll make sure it works. The theory is that we're going to use the cream cheese and the egg to help bind all of this together. I don't have vanilla. That is a sad day. To all of this, I'm gonna add just a bit of flaky sea salt. You can just add regular salt, but you need just a little bit to this to bring out some of those flavors. And then realistically, I should use vanilla extract because it incorporates easier, but I only have vanilla bean because honestly, I got these for super cheap. So I'm gonna scrape in one half of vanilla bean. Get all of that in there. If you use the vanilla bean pod to scrape it, it won't stick. That way you can make sure you get all of that in there. To this mixture, finally, I'm adding in two whole eggs because I felt like three was gonna be too much. So we're just, we'll eat this one for breakfast, which is part of our meal prep today. Now we're gonna blend this until it is nice and smooth. After about a minute, I'm gonna scrape this down. Oh, that's gonna be, this already looks so good. Once it's scraped down, I'm gonna let it go for another like 20 seconds. <laughs> That should be plenty good. Look at how beautiful and smooth that is. So you have to try this. That's delightful. Oh my God. Now, since I still want this to kind of be a pudding and not all the way of a cheesecake, I'm not making a crust. You can make a crust for this, but I really want to try to make this without the crust. So I have myself two molds here. These are just regular three inch cheesecake molds. You could also do this in a silicone mold too. That would work really well, like something you would use for cupcakes. Then we're just gonna dump in a bit of this in there. I am really, really excited for this. Best practice is to maybe fill it up to where you have about a quarter of an inch left from the top. I was able to actually get three mini pudding things out of that. That was quite significant because that's really only two sweet potatoes. Now, the big thing with this is because these are removable bottoms on these pans, I have to make sure that they're wrapped really, really well with aluminum foil. So this way, none of the water leaks through because we do have to cook this in a bain-marie or in a water bath. Now with all three of these wrapped, I'm gonna place them in a very, very deep pan, or you can do this in a sheet tray if you wanna be risky. Then I'm gonna fill this with hot water just until it comes up almost halfway. It'll probably be less than that, but that's gonna be okay. Now this has to bake, I'm guessing, for about 45 minutes. I've never done this before, so we're gonna go 45 minutes and check it after. That is at a nice 325 degrees Fahrenheit, and now while those are in, we can actually eat breakfast. And breakfast, again, is gonna be our potatoes, with chicken and eggs. And this, my friends, is gonna be smash browns. All you do is you take a baby potato, place it on your cutting board, take something to smash it with and just press down. Slide it off and you have a smashed potato. This is a lot of potato. 
Next thing is just a bit of olive oil. You're gonna brush each of the potatoes just a little bit. Make sure you season it with salt. And I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. Make sure I hit the back with salt as well. And once this is seasoned up, we can pop it into the air fryer. Now these do not need too much time. Now the next piece of protein is just gonna be our eggs. You can also make these eggs however you want. I'm gonna do them over easy, over medium probably. Some black pepper, hit my eggs with just a little bit of spray on top so this way they don't stick when I flip it. And then we give it the good old, good old flip. I'm gonna kill the heat but I'm gonna leave them in the pan for about 30 or 40 seconds while we get everything else ready. And that everything else is our two pieces of chicken breast that we actually made yesterday. Brush this with just a bit of olive oil as well because we have it. I ended up having to remove the eggs from the pan, otherwise they would have like fully overcooked because I got a, a little ahead of myself with the eggs. Those should have been done last minute, but my potatoes are done. A little crispy, little deliciousness. We're just gonna stack these guys up here. I'm gonna throw my chicken breast into here because I'm lazy. Chicken is done. That happens so quickly. I'm just gonna give this a quick slice, you know, some nice chunky pieces. And that, my friends, is breakfast. Look at this, this looks freaking amazing. So according to Macro Factor, which is another tracking app that I've been using, this entire breakfast has 934 calories, 94 grams of protein, which is pretty significant, 35 grams of fat, and 54 grams of carbs. This is a good amount of food. The reason why is because I wanted to be able to fuel my workout later. Cheers. Perfect chicken. It's still incredibly moist. Even after sitting all night and cooling, it's really good. But here's what we're really looking for. Dip that in the yolk. I love these potatoes so much. They're creamy, they're crispy, flavorful, salty, really almost, almost meaty in a way. Now, time to finish this. That was delicious. This one was more difficult for me to finish, but not as hard as the Goku diet. But now that I'm fueled, it's time to get to work. Almost forgot to pull these out before I head to the gym. These actually have to stay in here for the next hour or so as they kind of just cool down. But let's see. Oh, those look perfect. It looks like mashed potato. Uh, these are gonna cool down in the fridge until dinner. I'm gonna go to the gym. Now, once I got those into the fridge, it was time to head to the gym. And today's session is going to be very intense. I asked my personal trainer to help me make a program that'll help me achieve my Asta goals. Asta is incredibly fit. So I'm incorporating everything from body weight movements to progressive overload, which just means I add more and more weight to each set. Realistically, I'm trying to hit as many muscle groups as possible during this workout, just because I know Asta is using his entire body when he's training. After getting in all of my lifting and some body weight movements, I moved on to some stretches and then finally, I hit the cardio machine to get in about 10 minutes of walking while I watched Trash Taste and made weird comments in the comment section. I just got back from the gym from a great workout and look what was waiting for us at the front door. Today's sponsor, Tokyo Treat and Sakura Co. For those of you who don't know, Tokyo Treat and Sakura Co. are both Japanese treat boxes delivered to your door every single month. And this month, Tokyo Treat is celebrating with the Hanabi or the Fireworks Festival. Not only do you get a beautiful box filled with snacks, you also get a companion guide that tells you exactly what is in this specific box. One of my favorite things about Tokyo Treat is that they collaborate with custom candy makers so that way you get things that you can't find anywhere else. Oh. But if you're looking for something a little more elegant and unique, you can pick up the Sakura Co. box. This one is celebrating all things Okinawa, which is known for its wonderful summertime activities and festivals. Look at this beautiful artwork that you get. And just like the Tokyo Treat box, you also get a beautiful guide showing you everything that is in the Sakura Co. box. Sakura Co. also works with local bakers and candy makers to bring you guys stuff you can't find anywhere else, including some amazing teas. You also get a gift with it every single month. And in this case, it's a very appropriate fan because it is very, very warm, not only here, but probably in Okinawa as well. And the included tea for this month is the Sanpin tea. This tea is also from Okinawa. This tea is delightful. But there has to be potato in here somewhere. I finally found something that I think has potato in it. And if you guys wanna find something special, check out the link down below where you can order your Tokyo Treat or your Sakura Co. boxes today. You're gonna to get a special discount just for using my link. Experience Japan from the comfort of your own home through Tokyo Treat and Sakura Co. snack boxes today. Thank you again to Tokyo Treat and Sakura Co. for sponsoring today's video. Now, I have to eat a bunch of potatoes.
I have to admit that workout felt pretty great other than me being totally exhausted because it's a new training program, but it was a lot of fun. I, I felt like I pushed my limits in a lot of ways, but we still have another workout to get through. And for that, we got lunch, chicken and potatoes again, and a little bit of onion, littlest amount of vegetable. For lunch, I'm actually making potato pancakes. Now, Sister Lily did make a version of these, but they may have been slightly fried. Instead, I'm gonna be doing these in a saute pan, so this way they're super easy, and we're using minimal oil to make these happen. I'm prepping out three whole potatoes for this, making sure they're nice and peeled and get any of the gunk and ugly bits off of the potato, but I'm making enough for myself and for my wife. I'm just gonna shred all three of these directly into my bowl. Once you have all of your potato nice and shredded, this is a ton of potato, but we get two thirds of this. I'm gonna crack in two whole eggs directly into my mixture. Give this a nice mix, making sure that the egg is fully incorporated before we add anything else in. Also adding potato starch. To this, I'm adding in a half a sliced onion. I just sliced this nice and thin. We're gonna give this a hefty amount of salt because this is three whole potatoes. I know it looks like a lot of salt, but it can take it. Now, our potato mixture is complete. This needs to sit for around five or 10 minutes while we deal with the sauce. Now the sauce is also very simple. I have some non-fat Greek yogurt, but you can use full fat, 2%, whatever you got, but we just need about 200 grams worth of Greek yogurt. To this, one half a lemon, juiced. And finally to this, I'm adding in about one and a half cloves of crushed garlic. Add a nice heavy pinch of salt to this as well because you have to season everything. Finally, some black pepper here. Oh, and you know, may as well black pepper in this too, because why not? Give this a nice mix. And then you could taste this for salt or pepper and add more lemon juice if you really want to. You could also zest a lemon and throw this in here. Perfect. Lemony, garlicky, salty, perfect. But now since I have so much mixture, I'm gonna bust out the skillet. I'm gonna crank this to like 325 according to whatever this metric is. It's probably wrong. I started heating this thing up and uh, it's kind of smoking a little bit, which means it's way too hot for pancakes. If I throw this on here, it's gonna be too hot. So I'm gonna let this, I'm gonna Turn this off for a second. We're gonna spray this down and wipe away any additional grease. I have to finish mixing this because I have the black pepper in there. So I'm gonna give this a quick mix and then we're just gonna drop these directly onto the skillet. Hopefully get quite a few of them going because this is quite a bit. This is gonna be a big lunch. Looks like I can get just about four on here. Now these are gonna take probably five to six minutes on each side. About four or five minutes has passed and now we can finally flip the pancakes. Look at that color on, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, these smell amazing. So excited. These four pancakes are ready to go. I'm gonna remove them and place them onto a wire rack so this way they stay nice and crispy. And then these other two are actually gonna go upstairs to Rachel because gotta feed the wife. I'm assuming each potato made two pancakes so I get four and she gets two. Now these two pancakes that I finally finished are ready to go and then I have these two that I made earlier. This is so much food. I thought it wasn't gonna be as much as breakfast but this looks like it's just as much. Now I still have to heat the chicken up. Now here's what I thought. Why not take one pancake, take some of the sauce, just a little, you know, just like, just glue. Then another pancake, glue, pancake, glue. Last one. Now we're just gonna, we're gonna do two, two glues. It's so much. I'm gonna pile this up over here. Look at this stack, dude. Hold on, it's not finished. Now it's finished. There, my friends, is lunch, Asta style. This is so much potato, so much chicken, everything in between. It's actually 4 p.m. I had a pretty late start to the day and I still have to train after this. But this, my friends, is lunch. I'm really, really looking forward to this one. Going in, cheers. Uh -huh. There's a certain creaminess to it from the yogurt. It has that lemony garlic flavor we really want, which does really help the potato. There's a surprising amount of textural differences and juxtaposition of flavors. It's really nice. I do kind of wish I didn't stack it though. This entire meal for lunch is 775 calories, 83 grams worth of protein, 12 grams worth of fat, and 83 grams worth of carbs. But it's actually not a ton of calories for a ton of food. I'm gonna tuck in and then get to work. There's no way I could do the Asta diet and not swing a sword. Unfortunately, I don't have a sword similar to Asta's, but I did make a version of the Buster Sword that Cloud Strife uses in Final Fantasy VII. Unfortunately, since it's made mostly of foam, this thing was going to snap in the wind. So I dug deep and found my Shinai that I had used for my Ichigo video when I did the Ichigo diet. Chris Sensei had gifted me this Shinai and I was really excited to use it again. I got in another 20 minutes of training with my Shinai similar to what I did in the Ichigo diet. I also tried some cheeky movement with my 360 camera to see if I can 
make any cool montages, but they just became super, super cringy. So here, have a laugh. I know I did. 20 minutes in the sun of sword training, followed by the cringe 360 montage, worked up an incredible sweat. It's a lot harder than it looks. Let's go make dinner. I want that pie. I'm not changing after that last workout. That actually felt really, really good. Now I'm ready to make dinner. And in my bowl, I have two whole potatoes. These are two of the ones that we boiled earlier that we really haven't done anything with. And now we get to finally do something with them. And that's gonna be simple. We're making croquets. I was gonna say from Kill la Kill, which is one of my favorite animes, but it's not gonna be a mystery croquet because to these two potatoes, I'm using eight ounces of that chicken thigh that I had cooked earlier. This is just diced up, ready to go. We're gonna make some meat and potato croquets. Croquets. Next is about two tablespoons of dried parsley and one whole egg. This is to help bind it. This also, honestly, you could use mashed potato. To this, I'm gonna add, I don't know, quarter cup worth of really, really, really nice heavy cream. Pretty hefty pinch of salt because this is gonna taste like nothing. And as always, forgot to crack the black pepper before I use the glove. I'm gonna give this a really nice mix and then try to get some pepper in there. Now, our mix is completed. It looks like potato salad you'd find at maybe Walmart. And in these bowls, I'm gonna have a breading station ready. I have my flour, my panko, and my egg wash, which we're actually gonna also add just a touch of cream to. Give this a nice whisk, making sure that the egg and the cream is fully combined. And then, of course, salt into your flour and into your breadcrumb. And now, we're ready to form these bad boys. But, because I'm not deep frying them, because we've had quite a bit of fat today according to the macros, I'm actually going to, again, utilize air fryer chun. Now, we get to form these suckers. I think because they're going in the air fryer, we're not gonna make them super big, maybe tennis ball size. We'll drop it into my flour first, get this fully coated. I'm gonna actually press this down a little bit too. Then into the egg wash, and then into the breadcrumb. Try to just coat it as best as you can, you know? That actually came out really nice. I'm gonna put this on a plate. I'm gonna make as many as I can out of the mixture we have. So I was able to get five massive croquets out of that mixture we had. Now I have this thing nice and heated up. I'm gonna spray the bottom of it just a little bit because it's necessary. Then we're gonna load these bad boys up. I'm really excited to see how these come out. I don't wanna overcrowd it. So I'm gonna put four in there. We're gonna go for like 10 minutes and flip them. So this should take probably 15 or so minutes. In the meantime, we can make sauce. You can't have potato croquets without this. A little squirt of Kewpie mayo, a little squirt of the oldest sriracha on the planet. This is a preference, a little touch of soy sauce. Give that the good old mix. So simple and so good. These have been going for 15 minutes. I flipped them about halfway through and look at the color on this. I'm actually gonna, I'm gonna cook off this other one just in case. You know, may as well enjoy this one. Can't believe this is dinner right now. Get all the sauce right in there. And there, my friends, is dinner. Look at that. It looks amazing. It's actually making my mouth water. I'm excited to eat this, but we still have dessert. And I'm gonna wait to pull this out until I feel like I'm done with this. We have to save room for this. Now it's done. This entire plate of croquets, plus the one that's in there still, plus this sweet potato pie thing pudding that we're gonna have, comes out to around 880 calories, 63 grams of protein, 15 grams of fat, and 122 carbohydrates. I'll make sure I have everything on screen and in the guide, so you guys can have that on the website as well, but I'm, I'm ready to dive into these. Let's cheers. I'm gonna try it without the sauce. Oh. It literally tastes like if you were to go to KFC and get one of their, you know, their, their mashed potato bowls and put chicken on top of it and just kind of mix it up and eat it like cereal. That's what that tastes like, but better. Now with the sauce. Mm. Oh my God. The sauce just took it up to a 10. It's so hot though. We're gonna plate up that one. I need to know what it tastes like. Come back for you. Oh no, it fell in the sink. Oh my God, no. I'm so sad right now. Well, we only lost a little bit of sauce. Man, that's pretty. Like that is beautiful. Literally went in blind and it came out perfectly. Throw in a little bit of this organic maple syrup with vanilla bean infusion. That's it, you don't need too much. And that my friends is dessert. Look at how gorgeous that is. I deserve this, cheers. It tastes, it has the sweet potato flavor, don't get me wrong, but it tastes like cheesecake. It tastes like sweet potato cheesecake. And this is amazing. 
This is why I absolutely love doing these videos. I get to discover stuff like this and it makes me so excited. If you wanna pick up this guide that I made for the Asta diet, head over to chefpk.com where you can pick that up and support the channel for a couple of bucks. Maybe pre-order my book if you really want it. My name is Chef PK and remember, keep playing with your food. Oh, and let me know who I should tackle next. Yeah, this is not, this is absolutely coming with me.